When one talks about predator-prey interactions, one usually talks about the effect of the predator on the prey. That is, the predator kills the prey while increasing its own number. And this can result in observations such as the rod cover terror dynamics. People also talk about the adaptations of prey to avoid predation, such as camouflage and other defense mechanisms. And this leads to something called the red cavin dynamics in evolution. However, something that people don't talk about is the effect of the prey on the predator itself. Some prey can be dangerous towards the predators and can cause injury or death, but predators hunt them despite this fact. An example is jumping spiders which hunt insects that are much larger than itself and lions which hunt elephants. Here, we use a mathematical model to study the prey choice behavior of predators hunting dangerous prey. Specifically, we model the energy reserves of the predator, which can range from zero to AC. The predator goes through a search phase in which it encounters either a safe prey or a dangerous prey. The probability of encounter depends on the prey composition of the environment. Once it encounters a prey, it can either skip it or attack it. If it chooses to attack the safe prey, it always gets a small but certain gain in energy. If it chooses to skip the prey, it pays a metabolic cost and loses some energy. And similarly for the dangerous prey. If it chooses to attack the dangerous prey, it can either succeed or fail. And this depends on its hunting ability. If it fails, then it incurs an injury and it repeats this process again. If the energy falls to zero, then the predator dies. If its energy reaches the maximum, then it can reproduce. To analyze the process, we look at something called a policy, which in this case is an energy dependent behavior, which means it tells us the action taken by the individual for each energy level. In particular, we are interested in the optimal policy, which provides the highest fitness and we are interested in the parameters of the hunting ability and the prey composition of the environment. And we solve for the optimal policy using a technique called dynamic programming. Here is an example of an optimal policy, where on the x-axis is the energy and on the y-axis is the actions or strategies taken by the individual. Here, below a certain energy level, it is best to generalize, that is to attack all prey that it encounters but above this threshold, it is optimal to specialize only on dangerous prey. But how does the optimal policy change for different parameter conditions? To understand this, I made a plot representing the optimal policy as a color for different values of the parameters of availability of dangerous prey and the hunting ability. And in the bottom left corner of this plot, where the availability of dangerous prey is low and the hunting ability is low, it is best to always specialize on safe prey regardless of your energy level. And in the top left corner of this plot, when the hunting ability is high but the availability of dangerous prey is low, it is best to always generalize regardless of your energy level. And on the right top, where the availability of dangerous prey and the hunting ability is high, it is best to specialize only on dangerous prey, regardless of your energy level. But if we come down a bit and decrease both hunting ability and dangerous prey availability a bit, we come to the policy that we saw previously, where it is best to generalize at low energy levels and to specialize on dangerous prey at higher energy levels. Now we can go further and look at the evolution of the hunting ability. The method of dynamic programming that we use also provides the fitness for the behavior on the policy. And when we take the derivative of the fitness, it gives us the selection gradient. That is, if we take the derivative of the fitness with respect to the hunting ability, it then gives us the selection pressure on the hunting ability. This plot shows the selection pressure on the hunting ability for the same parameter values as before. And one can see that the hunting ability in the bottom left corner is exactly zero, which means that even if there is a small increase in the hunting ability, 
in this region it will not be selected for. And this can be understood by looking at the plot of the optimal policy. And in the same region, it is optimal to always go for the safe prey, which means that even if the individual has a slightly higher hunting ability, it will not give it any benefit because it is not hunting any dangerous prey. And this means that the evolvability of hunting ability is low when there is a low proportion of dangerous prey and also a low hunting ability itself. And the evolvability contrarily is the highest when there is a high proportion of dangerous prey while the hunting ability is still low. Thank you for coming to my poster.